This is Brooke, and you're listening to the Vintage Gardener Podcast, which is where I give you tips and tricks on gardening, particularly if you're like me and you garden in southern New Jersey, which is zone 7A. So today I'm going to give you guys a update on the winter sowing and the seed starting process, how it's been going thus far. Uh, For those of you guys who've been following me on Instagram and on YouTube, you guys will probably have noticed that I was doing a combination of winter sowing and traditional indoor seed starting. And so, um, but before I get into that though, let me give you guys a little bit of an update on the chrysanthemums. I know in the last podcast, I told you that Only maybe eight or nine varieties of my chrysanthemums came back. Well, I'm happy to report that I did find evidence that the show off, which was the um, garden type cushion mum that I got from Bluestone Perennials that was in the red section. I have seen some sprouts. It not only is it coming in, it's actually spread a great deal. Uh, So I'm happy about that. Uh, the other thing is that in the orange section last year, I did have this like football style mum called Bronze Giant. And I do believe I see what appears to be the Bronze Giant. I will know in a little bit, well, not in a little bit, I guess I'll know once the plant continues to get bigger because the... The thing with chrysanthemums is is that they do spread underground. And so I do have the one from last year, which is called, I think it's called Royal Glamour that is there. And that has spread. So I'm trying to figure out, I know that I put Bronze Giant in the back. So, but what I'm trying to figure out, because that's the only Bronze, the only, would be the only bronze giant that made it, is I'm trying to figure out if that's really the bronze giant that I'm pretty sure I put back there, there, or if the Royal Glamour just really spread that far in the bed. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Now, if I remember correctly, I think the the bronze giant might get a little bit bigger than the, uh, the Royal Glamour, so we'll see. So potentially, Uh, two more. I did go back and look at some other pictures of things that I put in some of the middle garden beds. Um, There is a yellow chrysanthemum and I found where it is in one of the middle garden beds and there's no sprout. So whatever sprouting in the middle garden beds are either a cheerleader or quarterback because um, those are the only Oh, I now that I've gone back and looked at pictures, I can see exactly where I put put things. So I just wanted to clear that up. So I'm still hoping that the chiffon chrysanthemum will come back. Uh, you know, if it's anything like the show off, it just seems to be taking a little bit to get, you know, to kind of like recuperate or I guess come out of dormancy. I didn't realize that it was going to take that long. Uh, some of the other chrysanthemums, especially like the little garden ones like I got from uh, Walmart, they've been sprouting. They were sprouting basically in March as soon as the weather started warming up slightly. So I guess that's what's confusing me. So uh, the one that I had is called Silver and Gold. There's a lot of dead overgrowth because I didn't cut it back. So I'm going to cut that back and see is there anything at the base. I could not tell if there was. Uh, but none of the ones that I planted in the purple section seem to be coming back. Um, the one called Splash Intense definitely is, doesn't, is not coming back. Uh, the Feeling Green one that I put in last year, that's definitely not, doesn't seem to be coming back. So uh, Heather James is, seems to be doing well. Uh, but like I said, I'll keep you guys posted. Okay, so first things first. Let's go over the winter sowing. Well, actually, you know what? Yeah, you know, we could start off with winter sowing. I was going to do something general. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I'm going to start with something general. Let's talk about the soil. So you guys know last year I did seed starting with, ooh, was there five or six different soils? And I decided on ProMix BX that was going to be my go-to. Well, I use ProMix BX and I can tell you that with winter sowing as well as indoor seed starting, 
It was absolutely wonderful. Um, this year, I did not use any vermiculite, either in outdoor winter sewing or indoor winter sewing, although I did get a little bit of algae. Um, I didn't, I think I may, of all the seedlings I started, I think I saw maybe one that dampened off indoors. Uh, the rest of them were, it was just, it was fine. Um, so that is something uh, to keep in mind. If you guys are seed starting next year, I would really recommend that you go with ProMix BX. Um, cause I'm trying to think how, you know, I wasn't really misting the seeds. Um, I, I did this year, I did do pretty much exclusively bottom watering and I use, when I bottom watered, basically I put water in a microwave, in the microwave, nuked it for like three or four minutes. So it was nice and steaming and I did it that way. Uh, that seemed to keep the humidity up in the domes and it, you know, it, it didn't seem like, I, let's put it this way, I didn't have an overwatering issue this year. So that is going to be my go-to method for next year. Uh, the the ProMix BX plus bottom watering with some hot steaming water. And that seems to uh, do the trick. Um, the other thing uh, that I changed, and this is primarily, this is really for outdoors, is that I got my hands on some mess tra trays. I bought some of my own. Also, one of the people who follows my um, follows me on Facebook I left a stack of mesh trays on my front um, front doorstep. It was definitely helpful. I didn't have any drowning plants because I had that issue a lot with if it rained or something that the you know the the flat bottom trays were collecting water. So I did not have this issue. Um, obviously, because there was no standing water. I definitely, in the winter sewing, although I did get a little bit of algae, it was definitely a lot less than it was last year. Um, the other thing that I changed with the winter sewing this year is that I put the seeds in a different location. I actually had them on the walkways in the parterre garden rather than um, on the asphalt of my driveway. And I think I'm probably going to change it back to my driveway. Uh, the asphalt retains a lot more heat and I think it keeps things warmer. I think it warms up the cups better than the gravel does. And so, and I think from what I could see, I felt like this year things sl started out a little bit slow, more slowly because it wasn't getting that heat. The other thing is the parterre garden does not get as much sun overall as that where I had the seeds last year. And so I just noticed the difference. So next year I will definitely be putting it back on my asphalt driveway um, across in the like one, I guess you would say parking lot section. Um, so I think they'll do better. I think, you know, they'll, um, it'll keep them warmer. I think I'll notice when the, cause last year when the weather broke, it was like everything sprouted like all at the same time. And this year when things started warming up, like, you know, my poppies, it was like it warmed up a little bit. And then a couple weeks later, my poppy started sprouting. Whereas last year it was like when there was the melt, I just remember that it was like the snow melted. And when I looked in the cups, like the poppy seeds had already sprouted and they were already like a half inch big. So uh, that's something that I'm going to do for next year. Uh, the other thing, the other issue I definitely had this year um, with some of the germination was that there was definitely less moisture this year. Last year, typically in our winters, we get, we get snow, but we also get a lot of rain. Um, last year we did. And so I didn't have to water this year. We definitely got the cold because at a certain point in time, like our highs during the day was maybe wasn't even getting past freezing. So the cups were just like frozen solid. Uh, but we didn't get a lot of rain, either, either rain or just snow. So that was definitely, that was definitely a little bit more of a challenge. I really, I did actually have to water the cups a little bit more. So which I didn't have to do last year once winter hit. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. So the next section we're going to do, uh, let's talk about the seeds themselves. A 
Okay, guys. So let's talk about, first off, the bad seeds. And when I say bad seeds, I'm talking about seeds that I know were fresh. And, you know, I've winter sowed similar ones and I should have gotten better results and I didn't get anything. So the first one is the Scarlet Peony Poppy. Those are seeds I got at the flower show last year. It was by Hudson Valley Seed Company. I, I'm i going to check. I may have gotten one single sprout, but I really don't think I did. I, I do believe that I didn't get a single uh, sprout. Uh, the next one is called Chima Family Heirloom. This was by the Southern Seed Exchange. I got it from Longwood on my birthday back in October. I... I thought I saw one, but when I looked at it closely, it was a weed. Didn't get any of that. Uh, then there was the Candy Floss Peony Poppy from Swallowtail. You know, I really don't know what's up with the lilac uh, poppies. You know, I grew, I tried some of the lilac pom-pom by Swallowtail. I didn't get any germination. Um, I mean, granted, the Candy Floss did a little bit better because I think I got like two sprouts. But given the hundreds of seeds that were in that packet, that is extraordinarily low. So I like that poppy. I think I'm going to order them from a different company and see if I have a better experience. Uh, the other thing that I got from Longwood from the Southern Seed Exchange was like, it's called the Red Buff Calendula. I didn't get that I saw. I don't, didn't see a single... I didn't see any germination. Now, if there's some cups somewhere that maybe it got mislabeled and I'll check again, but I looked through it pretty carefully. I don't think I saw any of the red bath calendula, but you know, I did start other calendula and this year I definitely de did not have as much success with the calendula as I did last year. And now some of the calendula, like the, the cantaloupe, the cantaloupe variety from uh, which uh, geo seeds? That's what it's called. I'm pretty sure I have additional seeds, so I'm gonna start some inside and see if that does better. Because you know the thing is that some some varieties of plants just may do better started indoors as opposed to winter sowing. So you know, so that could be you know that could be the issue. I think with the uh, the cantaloupe, I got like a couple of seeds. I mean, granted, I didn't start as many cups as like I did last year. Uh, but you know, these were the seeds that I would say, uh, uh, didn't too, too good. Now, some of the other things I did have low germination, for example, like the bells of Ireland, but I think a lot of that is just because I used old seeds. Um, once again, with things like bells of Ireland, I do have additional seeds. So I'm going to start them inside and like with bells of Ireland, um, I'm going to put them on the heating mat because sometimes when the seeds are old, you know, that may help out. So... Uh, I'll give it a go and see, you know, this year, one thing I'm definitely learning a lot more than last year is, you know, how the germination rates are affected from year to year. You know, Bells of Ireland is one of those types of seeds that had a low germination rate to begin with. I think it was only like 57% uh, from something I saw in one of like the Johnny C packets. And so the next year, if it's decreasing, it's going to be probably a little bit worse. But once again, I'm going to try doing it indoors on the heating mat and see if that makes a difference. I, I think it probably, um, it probably will make a difference. Uh, sunflower last year, I had really phenomenal results with the sunflower. Uh, this year, the two types of winter sowing I did. So I did a more traditional winter sowing where I actually had lids and then I just did more like a, a, direct winter sown in containers without the lids so that they got the cold treatment. Uh, I didn't have really good germination. Now, the second batch I started were red. They were red seeds, red sunflowers, I guess I should say. Um, they were fresh. Um, I'm going to restart those. I'm not really sure... I'm not really sure what happened. I don't know if maybe this year... Like I said, this year we didn't get as much moisture, so... You know, whereas last year I know we got like a ton of moisture, so it just it could it could be just a season thing because we just didn't get enough moisture to um to weaken that seed coat. So 
Um, I do have additional seeds, both the regular traditional yellow and then the red. So I'm going to just start some more, you know, and see what happens. If I start them indoors and I get good germination, then it may just have been that this year was just a little too dry um, for effective winter sowing. Now, uh, another thing I didn't have success with was penstemon. Um, I tried starting some penstemon winter sowing last year. I didn't get anything this year. I'll check the cups again, make maybe short, because one thing about this year was that I used a different type of tag and marker and so I don't know if maybe the tag fell out or the, it wore off, but I'll check them again just to make sure that I will, I'm not missing anything. But I don't think I saw any penstemon. But once again, I'll check again just to make sure that I didn't miss that I'm not misreading one of the labels. Um, so I'm a little bummed out about that. I would probably get some more seeds from Outside Pride, or maybe I'll see if Geo Seeds have them because. Uh, with with outside pride and actually you know what since I'm talking about it I'll bring up the other two seeds I had issues with um, I did some there was an anemone and there was also a pask flower and I got very low germination and those are perennials so they really should have had better germination but one thing I did did seem to notice about the outside pride because I, I got some seeds from there last year and I did like a late winter sowing. I just found with their seeds, some things in general just ha seem to have low germination and I'm not really sure what that is about. So after I finish recording this podcast, I'm going to check to see with Geo Seeds um, how what the shipping um, what the shipping times are. You know, even if I get them late and I start them during the summer, they should have, you know, they'll still give me enough time before fall to plant them where they can put on some growth. And I may try it with a different company and see whether or not I ended up, end up with a better result. So, you know, there was some good, you know, there was some good, there was some bad. Um, and that's just kind of the way it goes. You know, every winter is going to be different because Sometimes you're going to have a lot of moisture. Sometimes you're going to have very little moisture and it's, you know, and so it's just, it's always, you know, it, every year is going to be different, but I did get a lot of seedlings. You know, there was a lot of things that did sprout and did very well. Uh, one thing that I definitely felt this year I had much better success rate with was the delphinium. Um, last year, I mean, don't get me wrong, I got a decent amount, but for the amount of cups that I did last year, I felt that I got fewer seedlings, with, whereas with this one, I felt like I had the far majority of my cups, you know, were successful. I have sprouts in them. And, you know, as a matter of fact, some of the cups, I actually have more than one seedling. So, you know, as it's going to, you're going to, it's going to happen that you're going to have a couple of, you know, of the solo cup terrariums that don't have any sprout. But for the most part, I did get a really good germination um, on the delphinium. So I'm really, really happy about that. Um, so I did try winter sowing some of the stuff that I got from the... Hardy Plant Society. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's doing very well. I, I think, like I said in a one of the videos I did when I did my seed haul, that I just think I got the seeds, some of those seeds, a little bit too late. I do have some that are in the refrigerator that are kind of getting a chill, so I may try sprouting the, some of those over the summer. Um, but I don't know with some of those seeds, I might actually just leave them in the refrigerator until you know, November, December, when I can actually go ahead and winter sow them and they should be fine. On to the next segment, which is on my indoor seed starting. Okay, so indoor seed starting this year was very successful. I'm always going to be a big you know, bigger proponent of winter sowing. 
Uh, but this year I did start a lot of things indoors. And some of the things I started indoors, I probably could have done winter sewing. It's just that I was really tired of filling all those cups because it was using a lot of soil. But, you know, next year I'm probably going to do a few more things outside just so I don't have it inside. Because now with our weather being all wacky, I have the issue of trying to keep and maintain all these seedlings inside, which is what I didn't want to have to do. Uh, but... My big indoor seed starting success are the Lysianthus. I did a, it's called Chacon Green. It's a light, like chartreuse green. And this is the first year I, I tried it and I was absolutely happy. I had a hundred seeds. Um, I think I have like, I think thus far 24 have survived, but they're starting, they're putting on height there you know they're definitely starting to get big there I probably need to pop them up in another uh in a next size up container and grow them on a little bit I'll definitely be ready to plant those out around Memorial Day uh what I'm going to do next year is I'm going to get I'm going to instead of getting 100 seeds I'll probably get like 200 I'm going to get some other varieties um the heating mat that I used this year was a big it was a big reason that that succeeded so it's definitely something I'm going to do next year. I think uh, what I'll do next year is I'll just kind of like sprinkle the seeds over just like a, just a tray. And then once they start sprouting, then prick them out and put them in little, in actual individual cells. That way I don't have like cells that are empty because that's unfortunately what I had this year. Um, the other thing was dahlias. I started some dandy colorette dahlias. Those turned out really good. I have like 25 or so of those. Uh, they're getting big as all get out. Um, I'm probably going to have to pop them up again because I think they're, they seem to be struggling because I think their roots have just have overwhelmed the cups. And I did, I remember I pulled one of them out of the cups a couple of weeks ago and I do remember that the root system was looking, had reached the bottom. Uh, so that was definitely fun. I'm definitely going to do that again next year. Okay, so tomatoes. I started tomatoes <laughs> with the 17 varieties that I did. I think I seeded like 102 trays because I'm absolutely out of my mind. And I put more than one seed in them and I put them on a heating mat. So just about all the seeds sprouted. So now I have close to 200 tomato plants. So I've been um, asking various co-workers who wants tomatoes and I have a lot of takers. Um, so yeah, this will be kind of interesting. Uh, definitely one of the crazier things that I've done. I started some peppers and I had seen online a lot of people talked about difficulty with germinating them. Um, I used once again, my heating mat. I have had really good, um, good germination with the peppers. And so, yeah, so I'm ready to pot those up into the next thing. And yeah, so I'm really excited about the five different types of peppers that I'm growing this year. So let's see, uh, the big thing with the seed starting in addition to the lights, uh, which I, I got a combination of the GE grow lights plus some of the just LEDs from Lowe's. Uh, the I think the biggest thing for me was the heating mat, which was totally worth it. I think next year what I'm going to do is I want to get the, a bigger heating mat because um, I definitely need to have more of them. Um, it really does help speed up germination and that sort of thing. And yeah, um, you know, especially it was very helpful especially because I have an old house and so especially where I have the had the grow lights which was in what is now my dining room uh, because of all the windows it does get really chilly and so I really did need that heating mat to keep that soil warm uh, the room I've moved my my racks into now is a little bit warmer you know but it's still beneficial um, you know, for some of the things that are difficult to sprout, like for example, the peppers, um, actually I've had issues with the echinacea 
and what's the other one I had issues with? Um, actually, one of the flocks, uh, the flock seeds that I'm trying seems to be, you know, it seems to be taking a while to germinate. I think I have some seeds left, so I actually might try uh, the wet paper towel and see if that actually um, does better. So uh, that would be my top recommendation for seed starting is get yourself a heating mat. It's definitely, definitely worth it. So this year, um, I also tried um, for indoor seating, different types of seating trays. I did, let's see, some seating trays that basically were like four in one. So basically it was a one big tray, but you could fit four smaller trays, you know, into it. And then I did the Jiffy ones where basically it was like four strips. And I think it was like, each strip had like 18 cells in it. And then I had the traditional ones where it was kind of like, you know, 40 cells in one thing. So the one that I really liked the most was the, the four in one um, version because I liked the fact that it was clear so you could see the roots. And I liked the fact that you could take it out and, you know, take the one section that's sprouting out and, you know, and, and and still keep the humidity dome on the other things that haven't sprouted. It's really great, especially when you have so many seeds that you're starting. Um, the people who make the four in one um, seed starting trays do make the smaller one, the small, the individual cells, which is like, I think 12 um, in individual things with humidity domes. And I think I'm going to invest in a lot more for those because they were very, very sturdy. And I really, really did like them. Now that said, the one that was more traditional, um, one of the ones that was more traditional had the humidity, um, gauge and the temperature gauge on it. And I really did like that. I really did like that function, especially when I was trying to get seeds, you know, to a certain temperature, uh, because I could adjust what rack I put it on, you know, and adjust where I put it in terms of sunlight. And so like, for example, I started some flying dragon, bitter orange trees and that, you know, cause of where I located it. Plus, you know, the humidity dome and everything, it, you know, I got close to hundred percent humidity and that, that thing, it really, really got hot in there from what I did. And it was great because I got really good germination on those uh, citrus tree seeds. So, um, I did like the Jiffy ones with the a four strip. So you could take those out. The only problem is because it had, you know, 18, it's just the way it was kind of arranged. It's just that I still ended up with the problem where, you know, because of how I did it, I couldn't fit all of like, for example, one set of flocks in eight, you know, in the 18 hole. So I had a little bit that spilled over into another one and basically it was not ready. You know, you know, the other seeds in the other strips were not, you know, were not ready to come out of the humidity. Um, so for next year, like I said, I want to invest in more of the foreign one as well as the single containers. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, because I'm really good at separating seeds, I may just kind of like overseed each tray and, you know, to keep it all in one and then just separate it out once I actually pop them up. Um, I've been doing that right now with all of the seeds, the tomatoes, uh, the scabiosa, uh, the corn flour. Um, I just recently did, I'm doing it now on the marigolds and with some of the marigolds, there was like four little seedlings in one thing. And I was able to separate them out, pot them up and they're just doing, they're doing just fine. Uh, with the traditional trees, if I have a lot of one seed, then I would probably use it because they'll probably all come up at the same time. But I really do like the options that allow you to, um, you know, to have smaller, um, you know, smaller like trays inside of trays. So you can, you know, take things out when one thing has sprouted. So uh, this is not a seed starting success, but it definitely is a success for me. And that is the ranunculus because ranunculus is something that I've always struggled with um, in New Jersey. As a matter of fact, I stopped growing it at a certain point in time. I was talking to my mom earlier this week and she was mentioning how 
she had tried to grow some ranunculus when she lived here in New Jersey and that wasn't something she had success with. So, you know, I, I bought 550 corms. I'm actually, I found a pack that I forgot to pre-sprout, which is fine. Um, so I, I had, I tried to pre-sprout basically 525 and the far majority. And when I say far majority, I mean greater than 90% of those sprouted. So I've been planting ranunculus like crazy. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that you start 500 on your first go around, but, um, I am happy that it's been successful. I've been checking them. Um, they're, they're, they're getting big. They're putting on growth. Um, we have the next couple nights are going to be kind of cold, but then the temperature is going to pick up and I think I'll start you know, noticing more growth, especially because the night temperatures, some of the times are going to be like in the, you know, in the fifties, which is what you really need. So, um, that is pretty much it for the seed starting thus far. You know, I still have more things to do. I start, I have started some zinnias. I've got some more. I'm getting ready to start some Nicotiana. Uh, some of the things that I had problems with, like the Bells of Ireland, I'm going to start another set, going to start another set of a uh, sunflower so I can make sure I got get those and I do have some vegetable other vegetables that I need to start. So anyway guys, that is it for uh my winter sowing and my indoor seed starting update. Um this year is has been very successful. Um I have definitely like a thousand plants that you know, I've you know, are, are their seedlings and they're growing. So I'm really, I'm really excited. Um, I thought this year <laughs> I was going to have less. I was like, Oh, maybe I'll only have like 750 things to plant and it's not working out very well at all, but you know, that's okay. It's part of the fun. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me today on the podcast. I will be doing another, uh, podcast next week. I think what I'm going to cover next week is a tree peony, um, tree peony care because I just planted one and because tree peonies are different than herbaceous peonies. And I think it'll, it should be interesting. So I will see you guys next week in the podcast. Uh, for those of you guys who are on, you know, YouTube. You can watch it on YouTube. Also, if you'd like to have something to download to your phone so you can listen to it while you drive, uh, you can get the podcast on iTunes as well as Podbean. So guys, I will talk to you later.